Space, the knowledge space is an attempt to explore the role of architecture in the creation, analysis and dissemination of knowledge. This presentation in four parts explains briefly the thesis argument, the intent of design and its development, which then leads to the final design and its detailing. Intent of the thesis The thesis focuses on understanding the architecture of the institutions that are actively involved in creating knowledge about the country and its citizens. To govern and plan for development and welfare of the citizens, the government documents the lives of people in the country and the land they occupy in various ways. However, that knowledge that is created does not impact the society effectively if it is not disseminated correctly. In a democracy, it is essential to have participation and include people in the process of creating knowledge for better decision making and rational debates. Integration of public in the creation of knowledge is a possibility most government organizations neglect. The architecture of an institution plays an important role in either including or excluding the public. The relationship it has with the public realm in terms of access, transparency and inclusiveness in the core functions defines how democratic it is. The confluence of creators and end users can be achieved by designing for an accessible system in the city which integrates you in the process. The thesis envisions a future of architecture, of knowledge and imagines a new kind of knowledge space where all stakeholders can work in cohesion. Knowledge space here refers to any space where learning, discovering and exchanging knowledge is possible. This is a study of a few government institutions that are involved in creation, analysis or dissemination of knowledge done in order to understand the current infrastructure of these institutions in terms of accessibility, inclusiveness and engagement of public. Starting with the Ministry of Home Affairs or Directorate of Census Operations, which is located in Fort Mumbai, it is the primary organization that lists houses and enumerates the population. Despite it being an important space of knowledge creation, it only occupies one half of the second floor in the exchange building, which translates to it not having any significant public presence in the city. There is a lack of awareness due to this and a lack of space for one to go and access any file or to have a library which currently is in the Sanpada office. Archaeological Survey of Mumbai, which is located in Sion, is both a place of creation and dissemination of knowledge. It is an institution responsible for archaeological research and the conservation and preservation of cultural monuments. The AFSI office is located outside the Sion fort, surrounded by thick vegetation. It is difficult to locate the office, which is actually just a couple of small sheds scattered loosely. Even though it is accessible in nature, its architecture is not designed to do so. The National Museum of India, which is located at Rajpath in Delhi, is the most important space of knowledge dissemination. The location and architecture of the building makes it extremely accessible and creates a very active urban space that celebrates dissemination of knowledge. This suggests that the architecture and the presence of the building in a city dictates the effectiveness of dissemination. The National Archives of India is also located at Rajpath in Delhi. It is both a space of knowledge, analysis and dissemination. Its infrastructure and very well organized system of records make it a monumental space for researchers and academicians from all over the country. It is very carefully designed to create a space that dynamically caters to various groups of people and provides opportunities for public interactions. The Asiatic Society or Town Hall in Mumbai is a learned society formed with an intention to promote useful knowledge. The large repository of books and manuscripts is not only accessible but also is a landmark in the city owing to its architecture that elevates the active ground plane into the building. The Deccan College in Pune is one of the oldest institutions which has a postgraduate college and two museums within the campus. It provides for a wholesome learning experience as it is dedicated to dissemination and research and has a large influx of students, researchers and visitors from within and outside the city. The institution that I was interested in and studied in detail is the Survey of India which is the first formalized institution that uses cartography as a tool to administer and manage resources and people. The following diagram illustrates the structure of organization from top down, beginning with departments. It has three broad departments, the Indian Institute of Survey and Mapping, Zonal Offices and Printing Groups. DTE of Air is a separate department under the defense. Out of these, the ISM in Hyderabad is the only institute in the country and has a public library. DTE is non-accessible by the public and the printing groups that print maps are supposed to be accessible but the officers and the building make it private in nature. 
The zonal offices are in charge of creation. The country is divided into seven zones under which come the geospatial data centers, which are common for two or more states. This diagram shows the Pune Geospatial Data Center Office, which comes under the central zone and is the GSDC for Maharashtra and Goa. Its main role is to record, analyze, and create new data. The last is the map sales office which is the only medium of dissemination that allows public and authorities to purchase any map of a region surveyed by the GSTC of that state. It is located on Arandi Road in Yerauda and is a very small and secluded office for it to make any public presence. This diagram analyzes the permeability of the public realm into the survey of India. Three conditions are identified here. One where the access to the system exists which is shown in red. Second where the access is set to exist but does not which is shown in blue and third condition where it suggests it should extend to. The public access is permitted completely only at the Surveying and Mapping Institute in Hyderabad and the map sales offices that are located in every zone. The access is restricted inside the printing groups and technical divisions and the directorates. There is partial access to the geospatial data centers and the library at Hyderabad and Dehradun. However, the thesis imagines possibilities of easy access into the departments that are primary creators like the geospatial data centers and research institutes. This diagram shows the existing functions and the structure of the survey of India as discussed earlier and the possibilities of additions that can be made to it, like participatory mapping and development planning, interdisciplinary research, community development and awareness workshops as functions, at the creative level, academic and research inclusion is imagined and at the di disseminative level, library, archive and museums can be added. The imagined institute is a combination of proposed programs added to the existing programs. The programs generated impact individuals at local level, communities at ward level and the public at city level. The imagined institute is divided into three parts. First is the creation block which will incorporate all functions related to topography and geospatial map making and a training institute. The second is the collaboration block which will have community awareness, participatory mapping, planning and welfare and research. And the third is the dissemination block which will have a museum and exhibition gallery, data bank, public library and a map archive. Geospatial data center for Maharashtra and Goa is located in Pune. This institution comes under the central zone and is responsible for production of maps, topography and base maps for all the departments of the major cities of the two states. It is located in Yerauda ward in Pune and is 300 meters away from the main road. The site has a number of notable institutions like the map sales office, the Geological Survey of India, the Deccan College, the Maratha Museum and a number of schools and universities around it. The Geospatial Data Center undertakes large-scale projects of the two states. Mumbai BMC and Pune PMC use their services for special projects and development plans. The GSTC has an important role to play in development, education and research, yet it remains obsolete, inefficient and secluded. Its organization is not streamlined to function smoothly. The architecture also does not aid the institution in any way. The data acquisition cell, transformation cell and technical cell are all located on different floors and cramped up in one small building. The library is a small room in the building which is not accessible to anyone. This shows the various institutions around the site that have been marked on the plan like schools, libraries, museums and offices. The closest to the site are the map sales office, the geological survey of India, the GSTC survey of India, Deccan College, Maratha Museum and Archaeological Museum. The site is an open plot of government land demarcated for institutions that currently has the map sales office, which is a very small two-storied building. The plot area is 1100 square meters and has a housing society on the right. The adjacent plot has a RTO office and a public parking space. There are two BRT bus stops near the site which allow for easy access. The plot has a lot of tree cover which hides the map sales office from being visible from the street. Sunlight is received from the southeast and the southwest directions. The wind direction is from southwest and west. Inferences from climate study are, since it's sunny all year round, self-shading from the sun in the southwest direction is recommended. Incorporation of bioswales to lower micro temperatures. Breaking the mass of the building by providing courtyards for ventilation. The massing strategy was to arrange the creation block in grey and the dissemination block in green such that the intersection becomes the collaborative block which is shown in red. The blocks are positioned in order to create interactive and interlocking spaces at multiple levels, keeping in mind the direction of the sun and the wind to maximize ventilation and minimize the heat. 
The idea was to create different characteristic courtyards that would transition from public into private spaces. The institution is further imagined to have various spaces within these three building blocks that are connected in a way that there is a convenient and transparent flow of knowledge wherever permissible. This drawing was an attempt to understand the possibilities of intersection that happen between the creative and disseminative functions. These intersections that become the collaborative spaces where the public and the authority work cohesively. The idea of cohesion of program and of user with authority arose from sectional imagination of the spaces physically. The mapping of movements of different users inhabiting the space paved way for sequencing of programs in such a way that they make sense to the user while maintaining their integrity. The organization and plan developed from ideas of movement and publicness of the three zones. The third stage of the process was identifying the library as the main connector that facilitates the dynamic exchange of knowledge. Spatially and diagrammatically, the library becomes a nexus where the creation, research and dissemination happens. Parameters to design Response to urban fabric by means of a green public buffer between the main building and the main road. Depth of the building to allow for natural light, keeping the width of a maximum of 7 meters from either sides of the opening, maintaining the opening to more than 20% of the wall. Central courtyard for light and ventilation and to allow interaction of spaces. West and southwest direction open for maximum natural ventilation. Transition and breathing spaces between the two blocks. Vertical cores to be placed at key locations. Verandas and terraces play an important role in cities like Pune to help ease extremities of the climate. The building diagram shows the connection between the programs and the publicness of the space associated with it. The public zone lies between the road, exhibition, gallery and the laboratory. The semi-public zone is created between the laboratory and the research unit. And the relatively private zone is between the library and the training institute. There are two entrances to the building. The main entrance is the east gate which takes you to the museum block which has an elevated gallery that allows the ground plane to continue into the first courtyard which is between the elevated gallery and the laboratory and has the data bank at the north and the participatory mapping and the meeting in, at the south. As you transition from public to semi-public space under the elevated laboratory, you reach the second courtyard which can either take you to the archival that is in the south or take you into the library block which is the culmination point of the ground plane and the institution and the entrance from the north gate. The Survey of India offices and the training institutes surround the library block in such a way that they both interact with the library block and each other. There are also double height spaces and internal courtyards which allow for vertical interaction between these spaces. The vehicular entrance at the back where there is parking allows for a more private entrance directly into the classrooms and studios of the training institute. Going from left to right, the first floor plan shows clearly the elevated gallery and the laboratory bar that connects the think tank and workshop spaces with the planning and the research department. The third horizontal connector is the research unit that cuts through the library block between the archival and the Survey of India offices. The singly loaded corridor then takes you to the classrooms after crossing the data acquisition, transformation and technical department. As you walk northward along the double-heighted open studios, you reach the connector between the library block and the training institute which has step studios leading into the library. The singly loaded corridor and double-height spaces allow for circulation and transparency and allow for interaction with the courtyard. The first floor plan shows clearly the dynamic flow and continuity of the building. As you go higher, the building starts becoming more pertinent to the officials, students and researchers. The research unit connects the studio equipment room and director's office via the library to the archive and the survey of India block. The equipment room also connects to the record room and the human services department. The training institute follows the same pattern with additional seminar rooms and offices for surveyors and directors. The library block has reading desks and spaces for research. The third, fourth and the fifth floor only rise above the library block and have spaces for reading, research and discussions. There are also old map archives and old records kept here. The central courtyard space now has a glass funnel visible from these floors. Longitudinal section AA dash cuts through the exhibition gallery, the data bank, the research unit and the training institute from right to left. As you go from right inside the building, you see the elevated gallery and the staggered data bank and studio unit. You can also see the section of the research unit entering the library block and in elevation the library block connecting to the training institute. 
Longitudinal section BB dash is looking northward and shows you clearly the continuity of the ground plane from left side under the exhibition gallery into the courtyard going under the laboratory and entering the library block's double heighted space. It also shows you varying floor plates of the library block and studios that connect to the tra training institute on the right. Cross section EE dash is looking westward and it shows you the entry from the north gate directly into the library's courtyard where there is a glass skylight and it shows you vertical interactive spaces in the library. On the right side it cuts into the data acquisition center and shows you the workplace and the double heighted space that has a retractable roof. Cross section DD dash is cut through the intersection of the research unit and the library block and it connects the data bank and think tank unit with the survey of India unit. It shows you the vertical interactive spaces in the library as well. This drawing is a composition of the bird's eye view of the building and sectional perspective stitched together. The diagram tries to show various spaces that are created in order to allow public inclusiveness and more importantly tries to achieve the functional dynamism. The first courtyard enables complete transparency between the public and the authorities by creating a visual connect between the floating laboratory and the exhibition gallery. It is also surrounded by spaces that involve public participation. The library acts as a catalyst on both primary and secondary level by connecting the ground planes and the creative and analytical departments on the first and second floor. The offices and training centers look into the courtyard and try to create a social interaction while maintaining privacy and transparency. The building tries to create a dialogue among all user groups. This is an aerial view of the building looking towards the southeast direction. This is a view of the entrance to the museum. This is the view of the first courtyard where you can see the laboratory, the meeting room and the participatory mapping room. This is the view of the second courtyard between the laboratory and the library block. This is a view along the survey of India block. This is a view showing the training institute and its studios. This is a view after entering from the north gate. In order to create interconnecting spaces, of different scales such as library, museum, workshops and planning studios, data creation offices, classrooms and studios, reinforced concrete is used as a structural system. The rooms requiring larger spans have been achieved by the use of rip slab or a balanced beam and column load distribution system. Spaces that require larger public gathering are columnless in order to create those kind of spaces. The 3D model explains the structural system and the load distribution for all the flows. There are three sizes of RCC beams and RCC columns. The masonry walls are made up of AAC blocks. The skylights that are provided have retractable roof in order to protect during the monsoon. There are rip slabs provided for long spans in studios and workshops. There are fins provided for perforated light and ventilation. The typical base size is 7 meter wide in order to have sufficient light. Detailed wall section AA dash is cut through the data bank and the workshop space. It has a staggered roof to allow for more dispersed light. This wall section details out the top hung window, skylight, the continuous ripped slabs, the roofing system and the planters that collect the rainwater. Wall section BB dash shows the data acquisition cell and details out the double heighted space with a retractable skylight and the sliding window with terracotta fence that provide shading from the sun and allow ventilation. It also shows details of the fenestration along the corridor. Wall section CC dash is a detail of biofilters in the courtyards that also have permissible pavers which recharge the groundwater and carry the overflow into the filtration tanks to later use for landscape purposes. It also details out the connection of the glass funnel using cylindrical mild steel sections and spider clamps for the glass. This is a detail of a window system having rotating terracotta fins and sliding window. This is a detail of a staggered window unit with a top hung window and a skylight. Details of window with stone tiles riveted onto mild steel box sections. Details of rotating laminated lowered windows and details of sliding window with a ventilator. Water calculations for 3 OHTs and UGTs for 3 toilet blocks. Water supply system. Sewage layout and invert level calculations. Storm water is collected from terraces and surface runoffs from the ground are directed into the swales. These are then collected and filtered and repurposed for landscaping. Calculations for rooms that require air conditioning. Air conditioning layout of VRV system. Layout of firefighting system. 
the out of sprinklers heat and smoke detectors and connection to the wet risers thank you for